Welcome to the second episode of our Blue Planet Recontact series, everyone. We're really excited to dive into the rest of character creation. Before we get there, a few announcements that I'm also part of. Yay, finally. Yay, I'm back. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's really good to have you back for these cold open. I always forget until Monday and then I'm like, uh-huh. oh, cold open. Yeah. And then and it's, you've already it's, done it. And <laughs> It's usually Sunday evening and I'm like, oh, I'm finally ready to do this now. And okay, uh, the weekend's already gone and I don't want to bug Amelia because well, it's Sunday and- evening. <laughs> You know, it's one of those, like, you get to a point in the editing where you're like, oh, my God, I just want to be done. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit down and coordinate with somebody else and fight. Like, I just want to say my thing and I want to plug it into the episode and I want to not look at this anymore. Absolutely. (laughs) And, like, I totally get that. Mm -hmm. Um, But we found time. So good. I'm thankful. So first up, uh, the Blue Planet Kickstarter is going very strong right now. They've already blasted through all of their original stretch goals. Uh, that they've had, uh, and then they've actually brought in a second wave of goals, they called it. So, uh, oh, wave, get it. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> Nothing like ocean puns in your ocean based uh, RPG. Um, I was actually talking with Rich Howard the other day, and he mentioned uh, how remarkable it was that some uh, great uh, C3 guests uh, are actually part of this project in some way. Um, Neil Powell, uh, Taylor Labresh, uh, Rich Howard, of course, and, and of course, Jeff, uh, who's uh, the creator of the game. Uh, they have all been previously guests on the podcast. So what you're saying is that we have a history of excellent guests or that Jeff has really good taste in collaborators. It's probably both. That's probably, it's <laughs> probably both. <laughs> um. Uh, can we be the official podcast of <laughs> Blue Planet? <laughs> That'd be nice. I'll talk to Jeff. I don't think that we can. But I don't think we can. Yeah. Uh, well, if, if you haven't checked out the campaign yet, uh, you can go into the show notes uh, and check out the link that we have right there for you. Uh, April is Podchaser's Reviews for Good Month campaign. Uh, for every podcast or episode review left on their site, Podchaser will donate 25 cents to Meals on Wheels. Um, If a creator responds to your review this month, they will double it. That's 50 cents for everybody playing along at home. (laughs) Also, whether it's an episode review or a full podcast review, we'll queue it up for reading in our episodes and our call to action section at the end of each episode to thank you personally for bringing some joy and encouragement to us. (laughs) They really do brighten up our day and they also help folks find the show. So if you head over to Podchaser... Uh, for our show link that will be in the episode notes. Let us know what you think of the show or of an episode, and you will hear your little review read in the future. Absolutely. Um, I think that's all that we have for today's announcements. Uh, enjoy the rest of the character creation system for Blue Planet, everyone. It's it's a good one. It's, it's a good, good one. one. Mm-hmm. Character Creation Cast. Jeff was creating a survivor mod. Amelia was creating a cognitive synergist. And I was creating a transhuman for our theoretical campaign of a mom and pop corporate espionage rural survival campaign turned family owned private investigation firm. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. All right, so what's next? Uh, What's next is profile, Mm -hmm. and as I mentioned, this is kind of where you get some guiding lights for your character, but also the mechanisms by which you can uh, advance your character. So you want to create a goal, um, a motivation, and an attitude for your character. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty self-explanatory just from their terms, but ideally, the goal is something that you want your character to work towards in the game. Now, maybe it doesn't align directly with the story that the moderator is going to tell, but we all go through events in our life that don't line up with our goals, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, but it, a good session zero will help put those in alignment and you can help your character, your players meet some of those things. So the idea is that it's something pretty big. It's something you're not going to get done next week, right? It's a bigger thing. Maybe you want to be wealthy. Maybe you want to um, join the insurrection. Maybe you want to just go to college and get a degree and a big job. Maybe you want to move from the small town to the big city. Maybe you want to move from the big city to the small town. Some big goal like that, that's going to take time to get, that usually has resources associated with it and certainly has effort associated with it. Ideally, something that you could break up into chunks and sort of achieve benchmarks towards, because that would be more satisfying in play, rather than one day the moderator saying, okay, you have enough money to get that big uh, biosculpting surgery you've been saving up for, you're done with your goal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the goal, too, can change. Uh, in play, the goal can change um, dramatically or a little bit or dramatically, depending upon the narrative, too, which is nice. It's very, super flexible. Motivation is why you want that thing, right? What are you looking for? Um, what do you think it's going to give you? Why, is it, why are you driven towards it? What, is your, what in your background makes you feel that you need that thing or that, you, or that that's what you're chasing? And then attitude is just what, who you are day to day. How do you engage with the world? Um, are you meek and quiet and accommodating? Are you boisterous and loud and always in each other's in people's faces? Are you aggressive? Are you kind? Are you a liar? Are you anything that kind of characterizes your general, what people would say in one sentence about how you behave, that kind of thing. Okay. I think my goal is to save our family business. That is a great one. My goal is to become a famous singer. Mine is acceptance. Ooh. So for my motivation, I put corporate corruption sucks. Nice. I don't feel like that's really all of it, but I, I had to write it on the line. I think if we if we run this PI firm, like if if we're subject to corporate takeover, then like who's going to stop them from mm -hmm. messing everything up? That makes sense. Well, I think you have to have public stock before there can be a corporate takeover, right? So yeah. I, I, if we're a private business, maybe <laughs> we're good. Yeah, but maybe they're going to like run us into the ground. That know? could definitely That's... happen. Yep. And the thing to note is that Poseidon is intentionally, the setting intentionally is supposed to have a kind of space Western feel to it, a frontier mm -hmm. where, sure, there's laws, um, but their enforcement is even more uneven than our current society. Uh, mm. And it really has to do with your geography um, and resources as much as it has to do with the laws themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so it's supposed to have a, a bit of a wild frontier feel to it. Uh, and so corporate takeovers could mean amphibious assault, right? Yeah. You know, what is yours is now ours. Come do mm. something about it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, my motivation is going to be... Uh, uh, Kind of a twofold thing. Uh, one to add some more joy to Poseidon, but also to tell my story. Um, and I'm thinking, like in a kind of a like subtle underground sort of way, like something about the transhuman program or something that doesn't okay. sit That's well. That's cool. So like a, a like a folk singer almost, right? With uh, all your anti-establishment songs. Yeah. Uh, my motivation is going to be loneliness. Your character is um, so sad. Well, but I, I, but alone, I, mean, I was trying to come up with a term that was less sad than loneliness. Yeah. Like, he just likes people. I feel like he's got a lot of love in his heart, and he wants to use it. Mm -hmm. um, just not sure how to do that. Yeah. And then for my attitude, I put logical and careful. Hmm. <laughs> Gosh, what is my attitude going to be? I'm going to have, uh, my attitude is attentive, verging on clingy. Mm. Uh, I'm going with hopeful, optimistic, and rebellious. Nice. That's a cool combination. All right. Yeah. So that part's complete. Mm -hmm. Now we would you know, do attributes. So we picked everyday characters, so we have no additional modifiers based on that power level mm -hmm. to our attributes. You've already gotten your attribute modifiers from your uh, species. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the only other attribute modifiers would be if you wanted to do some uh, exchanges yourself between attributes. So you can drop 
an attribute by one and raise another attribute by uh, an, an equal one. Um, the the limit on that, just for some semblance of of mechanical balance, is um, that without modification, humans range between minus three and plus three. So the natural human state can't exceed plus three or go below minus three. Hmm. And of course, you don't have to modify anything if you don't want to. I think I'm going to change uh, a couple things. I think I'm going to put my physique to minus two. Ooh. So I can um, up my coordination and psyche by one. Now, of course, if you like fighty characters, coordination and physique are pretty important. Mm -hmm. If you like thinky characters, cognition and psyche are, are pretty important. But, you know, that's the fun of making a character. Uh, I don't know about, I, I know a lot of reputations in gaming are, you know, power gaming, right? People love mm -hmm. to have, be good at everything, but I love having to make the compromises and really leaning into what the character is good at. And then also leaning into what they're bad at. I love when oh, yeah. a character who is not fighty has to do the fighty and a character who is fighty has to do the thinky. Um, that just mm -hmm. makes for a much more enjoyable story. I actually think I'm going to go all in on the minus three to physique um, and bump up my cognition by one as well. So two, two, one, negative three for those four stats. Okay. Now uh, uh, I should probably give you a little mechanical heads up since yeah. it's not necessarily part of character creation. Just so as you make those decisions, you're making them informed. Yeah. Um, the way the mechanic, the core mechanic works is that you have skill sets which range generally between one and six. Yeah. Um, and then you pick the skill set you're going to test against and you pick the attribute that best fits the circumstance mm -hmm. and you add them together and that's your target number. And you're okay. going to roll equal to or less than that. So if you're at a minus three uh, for um, a particular attribute and you pair that with a skill set that is a two, now you're going to be at a minus one and you just functionally aren't going to be able to succeed at that thing. Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure that if you're modifying your attributes, that you're doing that in conjunction with what you want your character to be able to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it looks like physique is like uh, around the fitness, uh, like size, muscular, fitness, strength, toughness. size. Yeah. Um, all that sort it, of stuff. Yep. Uh, it embodies all those physical traits, musculature, uh, general health. Mm -hmm. um, there's the compromise you make with having only four attributes that you really have to kind of crowd some things in. Yeah. And, and that's a big change from the previous edition, but it's one we're willing to make just because it's more accessible. Yeah. And the focus attributes really allow that too, right? So you can bump them back up. Say that you pick physique, right, mm -hmm. uh, to have your sort of lower stat in, but maybe you work out all the time. So you could pick like fit and you'll get a plus one to, to whatever your score for physique yeah, is. Yeah, I like that. I can't wait to get to that uh, that additional uh, attribute thing the focus attributes uh because that that's really interesting it's a fun part of creating the character because they really start to take on a personality at that point mm -hmm. all right so i think i've got my attributes locked in for this part i do as well i think i'm gonna leave can... mine like where they were okay where they were at yeah you had you had uh quite a decent range there with uh with the species that you selected I mean, kind of. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> like a plus three, a negative two, a negative one. That's true. Those are, and those, a zero. are those are big for this game. A yeah. plus three is huge. Yeah. And major we have this thing called the the there's the rules contain lots of um specific modifiers uh for different things in, mm -hmm. in the game. And we suggest that people feel free to, you know, give bonuses or penalties to given tests based on circumstances. But the way we suggest doing that is the rule we call the rule of two. If there's a positive, if there's an advantage that the characters have, give them a plus two. If there's a disadvantage, give them a minus two. And then for every advantage, they get another plus two. So if they're if they've got if they're elevated and they uh they it's nighttime and the target's um, in short range, that's plus six. Mm -hmm. But if if it's too far away or they've got um the target is moving or you know, it's gonna be equivalent of minus six, and you just add all those pluses and minuses together until you come up with your number. In the wash, it comes out pretty much as the same as if you actually followed each individual rule for those particular things. Mm -hmm. um, so you can imagine um, 
if your character always starts with a minus three in something or a plus three in something, and our rule of two says a major advantage gives you a plus two, it's pretty pretty yeah. significant range to have yeah. a plus three. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, All right. So the next thing is our focus attributes. Ooh. There are, I wouldn't call them exhaustive lists, but I have spent a lot of time um, trying to think of additional ones and it kind of stalled out. Mm-hmm. Um, I could only go to thesaurus.com so many times and find <laughs> something different. Um, but you are welcome to put in your own, of course. And these basically are just adjectives, single word adjectives that describe generally positive characteristics. I did experiment for a while with an, um, a requirement that there be a negative one. So maybe things like selfish, crabby, picky, um, mean, um, grumpy, right? And that every character would have to have one of those as well because it felt like real people. Mm -hmm. Um, But in play, when you're picking the attribute to go along with your skill, I just didn't see people picking, most people, or a lot of people, picking grumpy and taking the negative intentionally. Mm-hmm. It just it just didn't feel like it was going to be used enough um, to make it worth a whole mechanic around. I'm right. still torn about it, and I and I may add it as a like an optional rule, but I think it would be cool as if one of your eight focus attributes had to be a negative one because everybody has negative personality mm-hmm. traits. So if I have a negative two in an attribute, how do I pick focus attributes for that so pick 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 whatever one you want to have so uh if mm-hmm. we're talking about your cognition and you want to be aware or calculating you just pick that uh and you write it into the space underneath cognition and you whatever your score is for cognition is a plus one for that so oh, okay. if your cognition is a two then your aware is a three mm-hmm. and during character create during character advancement it's cheaper to raise a focus attribute than it is to raise a base attribute. Gotcha. So you can really lean into being aware if you want to for less uh, advancement currency than if you were trying to raise your whole cognition attribute. Mm -hmm. Because mechanically, it just has a bigger effect. One of the things I really am appreciating about our conversation today is that um, I feel I'm getting to articulate thoughts that were just sort of more nebulous in my head um, Mm -hmm. about (laughs) the character creation (laughs) and the mechanics in general. And I like that they feel like they're coming out coherently and just and are justifiable in terms of design intent and now they're recorded so you don't even have to write it all down oh there you go <laughs> <laughs> um for cognition i'm gonna go with insightful and humorous nice for those Ooh, artistic i love that for physique one of them is durable it just is like <laughs> like that uh-huh well I'm going with sort of the the grunt slash hitter trope um, for our private investigation firm. So I'm going to go with clever and observant, though cognition is definitely not my strong suit. So I get clever zero and observant zero, which, you know, someone looking at a character sheet and seeing zero next to them goes, oh, wow, that sucks. But mechanically, it's just average. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I went with observant and logical. Feel like matched my attitude. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for psyche, I went with artistic and friendly. So I've got a three in those as well. Yeah, I went with determined and intense. So that'll put me at a negative one. <laughs> <laughs> I took deceptive and cool headed. Now, one suggestion I always make um, is to try and diversify your focus attributes, mm-hmm. right? Because some of these are pretty similar. Like, Logical and genius, argue, or intellectual and genius, maybe you could apply those in just about the same circumstances. So it's to your advantage in terms of, it's a kind of min-maxing, I suppose, but you get more bang for your buck if you spread them out. So humorous and genius is probably more useful than intellectual and genius. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went with acrobatic, I think, for my first coordination. Um, arguably... Uh, includes a lot of these other uh, items on this list. Yeah, it does. That coordination is probably the least uh, diversified. Yeah. I feel like graceful could be good for you. Graceful? Yeah, I like that. 
All right, because the singing, you gotta you gotta have a little bit of dance that goes along with that. Yeah, and you've already got a plus two for appearing graceful. Oh in yeah, social maneuvers. So you're gonna be super graceful. So it'd be uh, plus four at that or four at that point. Oh goodness. Yeah. So acrobatic and graceful for coordination. I went with fast and sure-footed, Ooh. which puts them at zero. <laughs> I took athletic and handy. Nice. Like a real MacGyver over there. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about my physique, which is unassuming and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like some of the physique ones. They seem to be the most diverse you know, in comparison to um, yeah. coordination. But uh, I took durable and petite. I want to oh, play nice. against type for the bruiser, not necessarily nice. because I'm big, but maybe because I'm mean or something. You should put one of them can be what I used to refer to my daughter as is dense. dense. She was just like <laughs> dense. Uh, well, she's not the, like a big thing, baby. She's not. She's just like dense. The <laughs> other thing um, to uh, to maybe press here is that these are just suggestions. If there are other ones like I actually thought it was on here. I was looking for wiry. And realized mm. it's not on here, um, and I thought, well, I could just be wiry, but that's I true. Saw petite, and that felt right. Um, but yeah, you can certainly make up any that you want. Uh, and I suggest just a single word. There's no reason people couldn't use you know, a phrase if they really wanted to. But we're trying to keep it accessible. So yes. All right, I'm gonna go with uh, beautiful and fit for physique. Ooh, nice. So minus two for both of those. <laughs> oh. it's a good thing you're transhuman i know right right so you're graceful in your coordination but really not very fit yeah your parent when your parents moved the sliders uh when they had you designed they right. kind of must have said here's the dump stat we'll just slide this one to the left <laughs> right well i i still i, I want to think that uh this character is still uh, like beautiful and and fit, but like every other aspect of physique is like just bringing the average down. Sure. Gotcha. But you're still mechanically, you're still at the minus for those things. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 Right, but less minus. Less yeah. minus. Yeah. Maybe it's less about the actual physical beauty. It's maybe when you like your personality starts to come out or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I should point out, we decided by default because none of us are aquaforms that we're obviously not natives. That we must be newcomers to the planet, mm -hmm. um, just as you know, a, a point of sort of session zero decision making. Mm. Um, that we are have all been here for uh, as part of the new new wave of, of the colony effort. Oh, interesting. I mean, it's possible that if we're young enough that we were born here, it's only been thirty four years since recontact. So yeah, we'd have to be in our teens to realistically be the offspring of any newcomers. That makes sense. I was picturing oh. tw 20s for my character, probably. So I suddenly just had like a Hardy Boys moment. Maybe we're, <laughs> we're actually in our teens and we're all just kids and trying to do all these things. <laughs> that could work, too. Uh, but that'd be an interesting uh, private investigation firm. Right, a very different sort of private investigation Yeah, it's firm. called Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hardy Boys. Are we the Scooby-Doo of uh, Poseidon? No. No, because we're not hunting ghosts. And we don't have a talking dog. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Jeff, can you make us a dog species, please? Uh, there is one someplace in. in the, it, it wasn't statted out, but it was mentioned. Okay. And I'm trying to remember what we called it. So that's our GM NPC is <laughs> the dog. A dog that can kind of talk. I just want to be clear that I'm definitely the Velma of this situation. <laughs> I'm definitely. Uh, shaggy, but as if Shaggy had taken lessons from, um, like a martial arts dojo. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can just mix a bunch of things, and you can be like one of the Ninja Turtles. Well, there you go. There we go. <laughs> that's a different uh, bio mod, though. Oh, <laughs> darn it! <laughs> Actually, that's one of the stretch goals. Is a uh, we'll call it the herptile, the, the skink, is what it's called at in in production right now. Is instead of being based on gorilla or uh, cat or just this amalgam it's based on uh, reptile dna so that it's got you're more durable and you have enhanced healing properties Ooh, the equivalent of growing back a new tail kind of thing oh that's nice 
All right. So it sounds like we're done with our focus. Yeah. Well, um, and just to reiterate, of course, you're welcome to make your own foci if you choose to. Uh, and it, it is somewhat optional. I mean, you don't have to create focus attributes if you don't want to. You can always just play with the four base ones. But as you They're can see, fun. just just reading down the list, your character has come to life now, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not just what they look like so far, but what, what they're actually like. That's yeah, like now we know that my character eats a lot of salads. Yep. Well, I'm already think, thinking like in my, my goal is to have acceptance, but under Psyche, one of my advantages is deceptive. So I'm thinking, how do you, rec- it's interesting to think about reconciling those in play, right? You mm-hmm. lie to get people to like you. Oh, that's so, that's so <laughs> close to real life. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's what we all do. It's called Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next thing is strain. Um, and this is really just a mechanical thing that's determined by your attributes. Uh, okay. So I'll, we'll figure out what the numbers are first, and I'll tell you how it works. Um, whatever your psyche te- your psyche score is, determines your mental strain. So um, if it is zero or less, you get one point of mental strain. If it's one to two, you get two points, three to four, you get three points and so forth. So um, whatever your psyche is, I'm at a minus one, so I get one mental strain. And that goes into the circle to the left of the word mental, under strain. And then physical is similar, whatever your physical Oh, uh, your sorry. Your physique is uh, is your physical strain determinant. Um, I ha- have a two, and that gives me um, two points. But because I have the survivor bio mod, uh, this is the genie mod, I get a plus one to that as just a little bonus. Ooh. So I have three physical strain. Nice. And so what is what is your psyche, Ryan? So my my psyche is two. So you get two points. So I get two points of, of mental. Of mental strain. And we all know what my physique is. Uh, negative three. So you get a one. So I get a one. You get at least one point, no matter yeah. what. So I'm fine with that. Yeah, mine are both my negative numbers, so I get one for <laughs> one point each. each. Uh, and that, that is used as sort of uh, a adjust. It gives a, it's a player-facing odds adjustment mechanic, mm-hmm. right? So that you feel a little bit empowered to have some control over your dice. Um, you can use it in two ways. The um, Probably the, the most uh, economic way to use it is one for one to increase your target number. So I'm really going to try hard to figure this out. I'm going to add one of my mental strain so I get a plus one on my die. Okay. Um, same thing with physical. I'm going to really exert myself to lift this weight. Um, you add one, get a plus one, and you die. Alternatively, if you fail a test, you can spend the point and re-roll. But the thing that makes that less efficient is it's still a die roll. But also, if you fail, you are now minus one for the attribute you are using until you've had a good night's sleep, a meal, some medical care, whatever it mm-hmm. is that in the fiction causes the strain. Um, so it really it was just a, a conscious decision to give players a player-facing way to adjust the odds, but okay. also to give some narrative consequence to getting a second bite at the, at the, at the action. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Skill sets. And here is the other place where your characters will um, start to really take shape in terms of who they are. So we're at power level every day, so mm-hmm. you get five skill sets. Uh, exceptional characters get six skill sets. Elite characters get seven skill sets. And this is for starting play. As you advance your character, you can always add more skill sets because you can learn more stuff in the story. Okay. Um, You start with um, 15 ranks that you can distribute. uh, And then exceptional gets 18. Elite gets 21. What that basically amounts to is you get an average of three points per skill set. So my advice is to just write threes down in the first five and you can adjust as you go. Um, But just to keep track as you're making the character, it's easy to do that. Okay. Um, or you can just leave them blank and just know that you can distribute 15 points once you've come up with all your skill sets. Yeah, that just makes sense. Personal preference. The other thing to notice is that on the character sheet, under, underneath where you will write the general for each of your skill sets is a term. And the first one is 
origin, the second one is background, occupation, experiential, and then developmental. And those are meant to sort of guide your character development in your head as you're making your character. So you can put anything you want, but if you're kind of following the intention of character creation, the first one is origin. What skill set comes from where you were born and raised, right? Um, I think the text says skill sets related to where a character was born or created and the nature of their childhood, right? So you could think generally, um, I, was an ur- I was a rural kid. So you could write like farm boy or, you know, you could just write rural upbringing mm-hmm. as, as your first general um, uh, skill set. Um, or you could be very specific, like boarding school, right? And that's sort of your formative experience. And that's really what the first one should be, is your formative experience as a kid, that's the skill set that we're covering. And as you write, begin to write them, you're going to find that you're going to write something in general, and then it's going to lead to writing something uh, next to it under core, and then something specialty, and then you go, oh, wait a minute, this is the specialty I really want. So now I'm going to backtrack, and I'm going to erase, and I'm going to rewrite. So you're going to find yourself kind of like trading back and forth with the goal of going from some general descriptor of those of what you know from that experience Mm -hmm. to the specialty descriptor of what you know from that experience. And whatever way you are are most comfortable doing that or most inspired doing that, feel free to. Um, I find myself writing something in and then going in either direction and then kind of erasing and rewriting until I get a set of three that specifies that increasing um, detail from left to right. Mm -hmm. So the 15 skill set rank is like three... Those are the steps. numbers. Then, those are the points. No, those are the points that you get to spend on your skill sets once you've established them. Okay. So they go in the in the big circles to the left. Gotcha. You'll have threes or or whatever, um, and they'll range from one to six at character creation. Gotcha. You can't have anything higher than a six when you're first making your character. Mm. But then you'll move to the background skill set, and then your occupation skill set. And the background is, you know, so I was. Like in my in my personal life, I was born in Minnesota, but I was five years old when we moved away. It was mm-hmm. pretty formative, and it was very rural, so that could be my origin, right? I learned to camp, and I learned to shoot a gun, and I learned to make a fire, because those are things that I remember from childhood. But then I moved to Boston and for high school, and that was a big change and very formative in its own. So that would be my background, right? Mm. And then I trained as an a ecologist, so maybe that was my occupation. And that's the next skill set. Um, and then experiential, well, since being a, a, a scientist, I then became a science teacher. And so now I have a skill set around being a science teacher. And I also started designing games. So my developmental one is now I'm a game designer. So those are my skill sets for those sort of life path selections. Hmm. And so that's the intention behind how it's structured when you're making your character. You pick those things from your character's life. And when you're done, you look back and say, oh, this is the path my character followed to get where they are today and know the things that they know. And I, I really like that because not only does it obviously obviate all of the skill, the nonsense with a 100 different skills, uh, but it also makes me feel like my character is a real person who had a life. Where is this like P.I.? firm located like where because i assume that like if it's a family-owned business ryan are we part of this family that's a good question um it could be i assumed i was yeah it could be it could be uh, a couple families or a few families that kind of teamed up together true uh to start this um i was kind of picturing my character maybe coming uh over to poseidon with uh with their family from like the age of five or so. Okay. So like coming from earth, uh, at a young age and then growing up here where, where my character's parents were started this PI business with whomever else. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then kind of grew into that. But, um, we could be siblings. We could be just, uh, family friends. We could be cousins even. Mm hmm. All sorts of options here. Do we want to do just like full blood ties and go like siblings or cousins? Sure. 
I'd like to opt out of the blood tie because I have kind of a concept I'm working off of. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. No, it sounded like I'm that actually, from before, too. I'm I actually think, from but... Mars. So oh. uh, born and raised on Mars. Nice. So how do you want to, to share these? Do we want to fill them all in first and then talk about them? Or do we want to f- talk about them as we go? I think I, I want to I... fill all of mine in first, if that's okay. Mix and match. <laughs> So, like, I guess for one example of uh, what I'm working with to make sure I'm doing it kind of right, right? Um, for developmental, uh, for the general, I put entertainer. And then okay. f- for core, I went with musician. Okay. And then for specialty, I went with singer songwriter. Perfect. Awesome. Now, again, this is an area where, I mean, you did great with that. This is an area when you're making your skill sets that you also want to consider keeping them pretty broad. So you wouldn't want a second skill set that was related to performing. Correct. Because there'd just be too much overlap and you'd kind of be wasting opportunities for other other things. I can imagine our occupations could easily overlap with this private investigation stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then the core and specialty is is an easy place to differentiate. Yes. I'm trying to think of the, like, I can't think of like words that I want. So did we decide where we where we want to actually be based on the planet? Are we in a in a big city or are we out in the middle of nowhere? I like there was some talk about that. I like out in the middle of nowhere personally. Okay, so we would be traveling a lot because people the population there's only two million people on the planet and they're scattered all over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like I like having uh that traveling element and perfect not being in a hub of activity. That way, people come to us, and we know it's significant if they walk through our doors. There I was sitting behind my desk, and then and then they walked in. Yeah, I would imagine that most of our business doesn't walk through our doors. Like that, yeah, no. that would be that would be really uh, telling. Exactly, getting a very noir feel in a way. Hmm. So yeah, like you said, I've got a interesting. Uh, if I if I came here at age five, like I could have my origin stuff be from Earth. Um, it's kind of that borderline age, right? Right. Where a lot and, you of, know, like, like I said, this isn't, this is not, there's no hard and fast mechanical reason why you can't double down on your background and not really worry about your origin. Yeah, exactly. It really just depends on how you want to frame your character. Um, I think a lot of people, I realize there are formative things about our personalities that are always part of being five years old, but you know, some people who lived in the same town their whole lives, it might be less influential than someone who moved to some dramatically different environment, like a new country or something when they were mm-hmm. a little kid. Okay. I think I have my... It was very messy. <laughs> well, I was trying to keep it nice and clean so that I can like just easily send it to you or like put it in the drive. But um, because of the carpal tunnel and not being able to hold a pen, I'm like... <laughs> oh, yeah. So one of the things that I, I maybe should mention is that despite the sort of default expectation that people do the um, origin background uh, occupation sort of skill set, we do have like a sidebar suggesting other ways to organize it. So oh. the idea is that oftentimes people forget a whole area that is commonly used in role-playing games and they find their character to not have anything. Like, I don't have any social skills. Oh, no. uh, you know, which is fine. You can wreck on it. You can change something, whatever. Um, but you could also organize them by sort of areas of expertise. So it, like social, technical, general knowledge, um, physical or combat, which are the kinds of things that are often coming up in role playing games. So if you prefer, you can just make sure you have skill sets that fall into each of those categories. And then you've got your basic five. Um, oh, I didn't, and I didn't make things. any social skills. <laughs> Which might actually be perfect for that character, because oh, there is a default. True. There is a default mechanic. That's but. true, and they're yeah. I mean, they're all pretty um, cognition heavy. So maybe I'll just stop going to therapy, and then I'll be really, <laughs> really good at them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now you would just need. So once you've made your list, you want to add your ranks in, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. however many points you want to spend on each of them. If it's important to you, give it more points. If it's think it's less important to the character, give it fewer points. Um, but in the end, uh, you can't you have at least one and you can't have more than six as you're starting out with your character. Oh, this, this part makes me do math and I don't <laughs> forget well, everything nice easiest, I said about this game. This has the, math. <laughs> easiest thing is just put in threes for all of them. Yep. And if you want to adjust anything, just take away one and add it somewhere else or, or vice versa. 
Yeah, I think that'll work. I am struggling with experiential. So I did private investigator for occupation for the general. Um, I've got to figure out what sort of uh, core and specialty that branches into. Uh, research might be part of it, right? Um, especially in a world where you've got all the digital resources. Um, maybe electronic surveillance. Um, maybe. And remember that they don't have to be like a perfectly logical line. Yeah. For example, like I have my, my ex- experiential one is friendly deception disguise. Right? Okay. So you don't, wouldn't necessarily draw a straight line from friendly to disguise, but in terms of like, I'm a friendly guy who can talk up, talk you up and start mm-hmm. a conversation. That makes sense. It's logical to assume that down, down the road, I could use that same ability to lie, but disguise is really just a fancy specific kind of lying right yeah so it doesn't have to be a perfectly logical straight line from private investigator to whatever the next categories are just recognizing that your character links those together in how they became what they are and how you approach challenges okay i mean i started with logic and got to puzzles and riddles so there you go yeah that's a good line so so i've got private investigator for the general um and i think tactician for the specialty excellent um that's what would be the middle of that like you could uh, even and and the other thing is you can also be uh, i don't want to say general but tactician could also be like tricks of the trade mm -hmm. which we would then have linked to PI, so we know it's not tricks tricks of any trade; it's tricks of the PI trade, mm-hmm. right? So, because a lot of it is is, is real time interpretation of what these mean as you play, yeah. And a lot of, of emergence effects. Like I had a character a kid the other day took shooter as the their skill, and they thought that it would be, um, sorry, back up. the The character they were playing had a it was a pre gen character had straight shooter. Um, but the line it was part of was, uh, I think they were a stand up guy mm-hmm. and then second one was straight shooter or whatever. Um, and it, in the middle of combat, like it says straight shooter on my character sheet. Can I use that? Um, and I realized that they didn't understand what it meant mm-hmm. as an, as a phrase. So I, I said, sure, because they wanted to shoot straight with their gun. Right. Oh. So, um, <laughs> there, there is, there is real time interpretation that happens with a system like this that yeah. is both fun and emergent so i'm done with my skill sets though i feel like if i was going to play this character in a campaign there'd be some tweaking that goes on as the first session or two went by i almost want to go uh move my tactician to core and put specialty as real-time strategy games (laughs) i'm gonna do that add a little bit of uh, gamer flavor to my character which goes along with my mastermind uh concept i guess oh boy um okay Experiential, I went charismatic, stage magic, and then misdirection. Ooh, nice. Figured that could be interesting. Cool, I I got all mine. The same advice that I suggest for making sure that the different skill sets don't overlap is um, probably the harder thing is to make sure that the the different um, levels within a skill set, the general, core, and specialty, are distinct enough to make them worth having in your descriptors mm-hmm. uh, and that that proves to be kind of the tougher thing for me to do than separating the skill sets mm-hmm. yeah i'm ready to roll whenever you guys are all right i've even put in my numbers already but i have the distinct advantage of having designed the system so it goes a little faster for me. i got my numbers in there too yeah i've got mine in there as well cool are you over there min maxing your character ryan just a little bit not not too much I, I'm trying to go based on um, like background and and stuff like that, and and mm. according to what my character might actually be, um, which is interesting. Okay, yeah, I'm all set. Okay, so for origin, I can't see now. I wrote over the little <laughs> marks on here. Yeah. Um, I put transition, adaptation, and then integration. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Do you want me to do all of mine, or do we all want to go do origin? I like I like uh, going one line by at a time for each of us. Okay. Um, for my origin, I went with Earth culture, small town living, 
uh, survival gardening. Ooh. Oh, nice. Very cool. Uh, I think that is, does a great job of illuminating sort of one of the strengths of doing it this way. Ryan, yours was very practical, mm-hmm. right? Much like mine. Mine's very like practical. But Amelia, yours was much more sort of like next level character descriptor. Mm-hmm. Right. Those weren't those weren't specific things that they do, but they're ways that they might engage with the world. Makes it harder to interpret, but does give you a lot more like range for what you want your character to be. Mm-hmm. And that's just up to the choice of the individual player. So yeah. Um I have Mars as my general. Uh, Mars born and red ra- born and raised. Uh rural survival as my core. And scrounging is my specialty. Oh, fun. I imagine I was in a part of a little terraforming settlement. Um, and you know, life was hard on, yeah. on the red frontier. Hmm. All right. Uh, what do you got for your background, Amelia? Um, I put reading and then I put comprehension and then I put writing. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I went with uh I actually took one of the the cues from the examples. Uh, and I thought it fit very well for my character. Um, I went teenager, social media, and friends everywhere. Oh, nice! So, are you are are you actually a teenager? No, I think uh, just having the experience of having oh, okay. been a teenager fairly recently, nice. uh, moving into my twenties. Uh, I took a mechanic, uh, electronics technician. Uh, and terraforming equipment specialist. Ooh, Ooh, fancy. Which I can't, I don't see that coming up a lot uh, in a direct sense, but I imagine it could be played with in other ways. Yeah. You never know. Um, what is the next one here? Yeah, that was my background. So. The the occupation is next, I believe. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I can't read it anymore. <laughs> um, for occupation, I put observation, interrogation, and undercover work. Ooh, I like that. Uh, for me, I went with private investigator, uh, tactician, and real-time strategy games. My occupation is security. Uh, for my general, core is intrusion, and specialty is bodyguard. Nice. Then we got experiential next. Um, this is where I put logic, games, and then puzzles and riddles. Very cool. Um, and I went with charismatic, stage ma- magic, and then misdirection. I, for my experiential, I picked colonial culture, uh, specifically like Poseidon colonial culture, uh-huh. uh, Haven, which is the capital city, uh, the biggest settlement. So I spent time there, apparently. Uh, and then rural villages, because we've been living in the sticks for a while, apparently. And mm. um, I'm starting to get a sense of what that life is like. Very cool. And then a developmental is the the last one. Uh, I put research and then information gathering. And then I wrote auditing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. We have to know you can gather all the information, but you got to be able to like Mm -hmm. parse through it. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And and my my strongest skill, I put a four in this one. Um, uh, Entertainer. Uh, for the general, and then musician for the core, and singer songwriter for the specialty. Uh, I picked for my ex- uh, developmental. I'm friend. I think I mentioned this before. I'm friendly. Uh, I am increasing my ability to deceive uh, and uh, practicing my disguise. Wonderful. I feel like that is something I've started to do in association with you guys. You know, having to put on a hard hat and a clip carry a clipboard and. Pretend like I'm supposed to be somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I took a, I took a point, uh, I had threes across the board and I took a point from my origin for the earth culture and whatnot, since I was pretty young when I came from earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I took that point and put it into my, uh, developmental, uh, put to raise that to four. So two for earth culture and four for entertainer. Yeah. My lowest one is my colonial culture. Cause I'm assuming I haven't been here that long. Yeah. Yeah, I took two from my origin and put it in my developmental. So nice. uh, I'm not necessarily actually great at, at adaptation and integration mm-hmm. uh, so much as I am great at auditing. <laughs> you're, the, you're the bookkeeper for the business, probably. Get those uh, futuristic Excel spreadsheets going. 
Mm. All right. So look, you have to follow the money. That's that's true. That's where it is. The uh, heavy lifting and the um, most of the numerical stuff is done. Oh, oh wonderful! Good. So Great. all that's left are, are some of the fun role play bits. All right. Uh, the next step would be, and we do provide a lot of advice around building these skill sets so that people can have some guidance. Uh, and then also about the collaborative nature of it. You don't all want to be making the same character, of course, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. unless that's the intent of your of your uh, the story you want to tell. But um, so the next thing would be tags. And for starting characters, you don't necessarily need any. Mm-hmm. We recommend there be one or two just to uh, further flesh out your uh, character. So you'll notice um, there's a box uh, on the front on the first char- page of the character sheet where you would just identify the tag with some descriptor, and then it doesn't have to have any kind of mechanical effect. It can just be a role playing cue uh, or just a descriptive cue. But um, you can also give it a a mechanical effect if you want to. I think the example I used previously was bum knee, right? Uh, that says a lot about your character because in a world where uh, you've got such precise and and uh, effective medical care and genetic engineering, there's no reason for someone with any resources at all to continue to have a bum knee. Um, but if you do, then it means that you're d- either doing it by choice or you don't have an option. So it does tell a lot about your character. I'm going to just take a single tag for my character to start with. I'm going to say wild look, which means... Um, when in a social, when using a social maneuver to intimidate, uh, I get a plus one, mm. just because I'm a little, little wild, little wild eyes. I'm playing off the fact that I have a physique uh, focus called petite at three, which kind of implies I'm really small, mm-hmm. and so I figure if I'm going to be intimidating at all, it has to be something more social than physical. Mm-hmm. Um, I just picked one that was like that seems correct. Uh, so I wrote, comes prepared, and then the feature is always has office supplies. <laughs> Post-it notes and pens everywhere. Right, yeah, some little sticky tabs. If I were running this campaign, when we talk about the next thing, traits, I would suggest that we come up with a shared trait mm-hmm. for the for the campaign itself. It might be about the business specifically, mm-hmm. or it could be about sort of what we decide the campaign is going to be about. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, And then if you want to, as an individual character, you can add in any number of other tracks for elements of the character that you want to follow. Okay. Or, or the moderator may say, you know, this game is going to involve a lot of sort of scary existential things. So we're going to have um, a bravery track or a fear track or, or whatever. And then you come up with the categories that go with that. We provide guidance on how to, to build those. Okay. Um, for my tag, I'm going to put trendy. Uh, plus one to social maneuvers involving youth. So if if uh, socializing with the youth oh, of the, nice. the world, uh, I, I kind of know the latest trends. Get the likes. So I, Yeah, so I can uh, kind of speak their language and I, I know what on fleek means and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, that was so 2020. I don't <laughs> I don't. I have no idea what on fleek means, but <laughs> I my character referred would. to something as totally dope the other day, and now my kids won't stop saying it. Yeah, like they think that this is the funniest thing that they've ever heard. Goes around, and, comes around. Yep. And so now the other day, and it was like we're playing Pokemon, and we caught this really cool one. You know what it was, Mom? And I was like, what? And he goes, dope. <laughs> I was like. Mm. <laughs> I don't Thanks. Think, I don't Thanks. Think I get it. I'm old. That's not an official Pokemon. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think it is. Yeah. All right. I think I'll just go with the one trait uh, or a tag. Keep it simple. And it could be that the moderator wants to impose tags. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for jumping ahead to tracks. I wasn't paying attention. But no, it's fine. Um, with tags, you could uh, have a moderator impose one to start the game, too. Like maybe you're wanted. Mm-hmm. That's one that comes to mind. Like the whole party is wanted. And, and you want to make make that part of the the character description, but like anything it. like that, right? Yeah. Or maybe you're all wealthy, or maybe you're all poor, or whatever. It's a I did add to- one more. I wrote fiscal responsibility because my goal is to save the family business, uh, and yeah, so yeah. like I'm very serious about like not misusing the office supplies that I have, and like let's not spend too much money. It's really just a place to codify what you're talking about in your session zero about your characters. Yeah. Okay. 
Now we can talk about tracks. Yeah. So just to, to sort of push the example, what kind of track would you imagine would be worth uh, pacing for this, for this campaign? Well, if we want to save the family business, that means we're probably struggling. So we could just call it family business. Yeah. Uh, and then um, noting that it, it still has to be personal. It wouldn't be, it's not a track to save the business. It's a track that uh, describes your connection to that effort. Um, because I, I think the way it's realized in the mechanics wouldn't necessarily allow us to tie in whether the business is being saved or not directly. Cause that's the story, right? Right. When the campaign's yeah. over, did we save the business as opposed to from day to day, how do we feel about the effort to save the business? Mm -hmm. And what are you personally doing right. for that? So does that go like on the top, the trait? Yeah. Where it says trait, trait um, okay. what do we call it? Save, saving the family business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I'd be willing to bet my uh, role is like social media manager and uh, branding <laughs> and branding. So on a day, on a day to day basis, how do we feel about the business or, or like, is our average, like, are we frustrated uh, or are we excited or is it just more neutral than that? So the, the idea is that you have a neutral position or your, your, your sort of set everyday position. Yeah. Employed. That's my, that's my <laughs> neutral position. Okay. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> I like that. Uh, and then I guess the, the next one down then might be furloughed. Mm -hmm. A little hitting a little too close to home. <laughs> right. And then uh, later. And, the, and the lowest one would be fired. Fired feels, yeah. for me, I'm going to, yeah, I think fired It's feels, more evocative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what's the next one up from employed? Um, I think it's like employed, employee of the month, promotion. Uh, can we make top one can we make the top one corner office yes <laughs> since we don't have one anyway i'm imagining since we're just in right. a little rural uh prefab colonial shelter mm -hmm. uh, you get to put your stuff in the top drawer of the desk <laughs> <laughs> the easiest drawer to reach uh okay so employ and then what was the middle one um employed was the middle one yep yeah employed is the middle and then employee of the month was the next of one the up month, that's right and then corner office was the top mm -hmm. one and so in play, you know, as a moderator, I might be like, you guys, and this isn't uh, something that's constantly changing throughout a, a, a session, but it might change once in a session. It might not, it might change a couple of times, but I would imagine like, let's say we've gotten to the end of the adventure and for you know the episode of the week uh, and you've just completed the job and the people that hire you stiff you for your pay. Mm. I might make you, if I'm the moderator, I might ask you all to make psyche tests against essentially your willpower to keep going. Um, and if you fail, then I tell you, okay, I'm going to bump you down one level on the save the family business track. Okay. So you you were just holding on at, at employed. Now you're feeling furloughed, right? I mean, you're not yeah. technically furloughed, but that's what you're feeling like. Oh, and, and so like that's that, coming. Yeah. So what that means is in any circumstance where you where that's a negative feeling furloughed, it's going to be a minus a penalty to your, your test, uh, a minus one. Uh, if for some reason, and I can imagine a few where that situation would give you an advantage, like if you were trying to maybe like betray the family or something, right? yeah. it would give you a bonus. Okay. Um, so that there's a mechanical hook to the role-playing hook of being like that person. So um, then we're gonna are we gonna want to create a like a p more personal track as well you can if you want to yeah um and you can make we suggest making one or two for the party uh like this one uh and then one or two for your individual character something that's important to you in in expressing the character concept okay. ideally or just something that you think would be fun enhancement to your personal role playing okay very cool and the modifiers for the tracks don't apply to every role you make they right. they kind of really only apply to the significant tests of that specific thing right like given my character concept yeah yeah i'll stop talking now <laughs> so i was thinking of a personal track for my character mm. um like a superstar nice like a superstar track um i want one of the negative ones uh probably the first negative one 
to be imposter syndrome. Oh, oh. nice. Actually, <laughs> the sad thing is, I would imagine for many of us, that's the average. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I mean, who am I to be designing a game, right? Like, uh huh. You'll probably realize, I think I mentioned this, that the areas where you need to write more are the areas that we made way too cramped on this character sheet. So those are being redesigned. So there'll be more space to write stuff out, mm-hmm. particularly in the in the ties. But for now, it is what it is. You know what? I think uh, I think I am going to move imposter syndrome to the base level, <laughs> um, and then put. Uh, all right. So I've got imposter syndrome uh, for the base, and then writer's block for the first one down, and then burned out mm. for the lowest. And uh, one above imposter syndrome, I'm going with inspired. Um, and then for the top tier, uh, found my muse. Ooh, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the advantage of this one is they don't have to be quite as carefully labeled because they have distinct levels. You don't have to make the mutually exclusive descriptors like you do with skill sets. Yeah. Um, so for mine, uh, my, my track is titled Belonging. Since that was sort of my shtick as I was thinking about the character concept. Mm -hmm. And I start at outsider. And as I go down, uh, I would be loner and then finally lost. But as I go up, I get a circle of friends and finally a family. Very cool. I haven't really thought of mine yet, but we can move on. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm toying with it. Okay. So we could uh, we could move on to ties while you're working on that one. Okay. Um, so ties are really what they sound like ties to organizations or people, and they are to help your character not just be this isolated entity in the setting, but to ground them in realistic role playing opportunities and in, with connecting them to the world around them, like we are connected to the world around us. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, uh, the, the comical way to describe it would be to sort of prevent you from being murder hobos, right? Because <laughs> you, you have a place in, in a uh, society in which you are actually living. Right. Uh, and they can be as elaborate or as many as you want. Uh, again, we suggest a couple. Uh, it's always great to have connections to the other characters. So it might be fun if we each had a connection, a tie to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be logical that we each had a tie to the company, um, though it does a nice parallel to the track we created for the company, but it's not necessarily necessary. And of course, you can have your own private one if, if any of us have a spouse or a polycule or or uh, kids or um, just a community organization that we're part of or a second job or or what have you um, or a dark past and you've got you know somebody who's blackmailing you or hunting you or whatever that could be a time mm-hmm. as well well it doesn't have to be a positive thing uh, in fact for a role-playing game it's probably a, sometimes better to have something that's not positive because it gives good hooks for everything yeah absolutely what is the name of our pi firm it's got to be maybe uh based off of our character's last name like if our family is the one that founded this pi firm right that we'd have to come up with names before we can think of that, though. I know. I have a first name, but I don't know. I'm so bad at last names. Oh. Okay. Well, what's your first name? And are, are yeah. we siblings? Um, we, well, we said siblings are cousins. So, yeah. like, we could have the same last name if we wanted. That's, that's true either way. Yeah. Um, uh, my first name is Maris. Maris. Okay. It means of the sea. Ooh. <laughs> oh. mm. what, uh, what origin is that? Uh, it's English. Oh, okay. Or I guess, I think Latin, maybe, technically, before it was English. I know mar is sea or ocean in Spanish. How do you spell that? M-A-R-I-S. Latin origin, yeah. Oh, well, technically we came from Earth, didn't we? So, like, yeah, it could be any kind of regular... Mm-hmm. Uh, I say regular last name as if last names have any sense to them at all. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is, in fact, the name of a place. I think it should just be Pacific. Pacific? Pacific. That's uh, that's what you want the last name to be? Sure, why not? 
Okay. <laughs> it could be Atlantic if you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with uh Saren for my character's first name. Um it's a Welsh origin meaning star. Ooh. I didn't want to go with the Latin word for star. Um although Estelle, no, Estella, they sound very, very old fashioned. I think you did one something like didn't you do something kind of like that for another recent game? That's very possible. Titania, uh or Titania, Titania well, it would be kind of cool too. That's uh the largest of Uranus's moons. <laughs> Queen of the Fairies. Earth. In Shakespeare's A Midsummer, Midsummer Night's Dream. Tatiana. Well, it's T-I-T-A-N-I-A. Is it pronounced Tatiana? I don't know. I assume that's I right. Know. Yeah, I'll go, Serene. Uh Pacific? Mm-hmm. Okay. I like that because the uh, largest cluster of islands is called the Pacifica Archipelago. Um, and there's going to be constant, like, confusion between Pacific and Pacifica. <laughs> and no, 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 no. It's it's Pacific. It's the net. It's we the did name. all the it's branding not... before we got right, there. Right. Like, <laughs> well, we already printed the business cards. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're not doing well. <laughs> yeah. Everybody goes to the Pacific Archipelago um, to find our place, and we're well, not it there. All, it's it's all autofill uh, when you do your search, right? So yeah. everything comes up Pacifica, and so you're. You never get any hits. Oh, mm-hmm. super bad SEO. Oh, that sucks. We're in talks to change it, though. We're like, what if we just added an A on the sign, though? What is our last name? Right? It's like our parents absolutely won't. And we're like, but we really need you to. <laughs> <laughs> this, the, our whole uh, thing is to take down everything that uh, can interfere with the Pacific uh, SEO. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So if if I want like if we want our tie to be to this PI firm, mm-hmm. it's like what Pacific Investigative Services or something. Is that I, go I under just, name? I like I, I just like Pacific Investigators. Uh, PI PI yeah, which, which sounds fun. Yes, I bet we get a lot of like. Did you say Pacific Investigators? What? What's that? <laughs> Pacific. 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 Yeah. Pacific specific. <laughs> Specifically, Pacific investigators, the PI firm. Okay, so my uh, connection then, I guess all of us would be employees, but you'd also be the boss. So I'm just an employee. You'd be owner operators, I guess. Well, we are, I think, I would say like set to inherit eventually. I don't oh, think that yes. we're in charge yet. Oh, yeah. I thought you guys were in charge. Yeah. I, I think, don't think so. Yeah, I think our parents are still around and. And still calling the shots. Well, yeah, so I think to, maybe so they're to like to your parents, managing, then. like you know, they're like emeritus, like you know. Oh, that's great because I work for your parents. I don't work for you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, right. And I say that all the time, as <laughs> right. friendly as, as friendly as possible, because I don't. I'm like, well, I, but your mom said. Oh, that's got to be awful when I say, but your mom said. <laughs> business decisions. And I guess I have. To, I, I very quickly learned that that's not what I should. I should say. Mrs. Pacific said. <laughs> Pacific. But then actually we have two moms, so it's, they're both Mrs. Pacific, oh, and that okay. didn't clear anything up at all. <laughs> so Mama and Mom, I, uh, Mama right. Pac- Pacific said? Mama Mrs. Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ms. Ms. and, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, so what obligation is, like, how we f- connect to like how we feel about obligation the obligation is what you have to do to maintain that tie in in whatever way you want to maintain it so gotcha in this case um the name is pacific investigations my connection is employee uh and my obligation is i gotta do what you guys tell me if i want to get paid or i lose my job right Mm -hmm. so that's pretty straightforward if we go to kind of the opposite extreme let's say i decided that i am an escapee from a genetics laboratory um and that my connection to them is the escapee part. The obligation is to keep running and keep from like coming up on the radar so that they can recapture me. Continue right? being escaped. Right. So the idea is that if I don't do those things, then the game master can you know, complicate my life by having me found 
and now I have to go underground again. Gotcha. So the idea is that you want to put a little bit of mechanical, even though it's not like a specific rule, you want to put some sort of like teeth in it so that your character lives up to that obligation and doesn't just forget about the fact mm-hmm. that they have kids. Mm-hmm. So if it was kids, you might say, well, I have a financial obligation. It's amazing how many ex-spouses there are in uh, in my playtest groups. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's all about like making that alimony or whatever, right? Uh, so. Okay. That's really funny. <laughs> so yeah, we're set to, we're set to kind of inherit this uh, together when, uh, when our parents uh, retire effectively, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I want I want to say that we are siblings because okay. I want two moms too. Okay. And um, <laughs> don't I, we all? It, it would be interesting if we're around the same age too. That uh, each of our moms carried us at the same time. How about three moms? Oh, that's adorable. I really like that. Why not three moms? This is Poseidon. This is twenty one ninety nine. True. You could have all the moms. <laughs> we have all the moms, and it's and it's genetically and genetic engineering. So you could actually be the biological offspring of all three moms. Oh, that blows my mind. That's amazing, especially because you were both genetically modified prenatally. Mm-hmm. That's true. Do we have to name these moms? Because if we <laughs> that, have to name that, them, that we more than two. <laughs> Please tell me that they're named after other oceans, like yes. Indian, Atlantic, and Arctic, <laughs> or something. Yes. <laughs> Pacific. That would be some. That would be some super hippie stuff. I'm not sure that 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 kind of hippie would become private investigators, but the kind of private investigators you've been describing, maybe so. Yeah. We're gonna bring down the man. All right. Now I really want to play this campaign. (laughs) So I I need uh, another. Pacific investigations, uh, inheritance, and keep the business afloat. Be the obligation, right? Mm Hmm. Um, we've got three moms. Yeah. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put under name, I'm going to put moms. Mm-hmm. That's probably Connection. a good one. Connection. They're my moms. No. Uh, <laughs> Offspring. Child. Genetic result. All right. Uh, and then obligation. Uh, can I just put yes? Because I think that's how moms work. So I'm identifying you two as a connection together as the siblings. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and my my connection to you is coworker, because <laughs> that's the problem. Like I'm actually employed by your moms, not by you. Mm-hmm. Um, and my obligation is to keep you satisfied while mm, actually doing what your parents tell me to. <laughs> Ryan, what is your character's name? Uh, Saren. S E R E N. Okay. I'm Zebulon Smith, but I go by Zeb. Nobody calls me Zebulon. In fact, you're probably not even sure that you might not even know that Zebulon is my name, but it's Zeb Smith with a Y. And for some reason, I'm kind of, I'm always about that Y. (laughs) I guess when your name is generic as Smith, you want to make sure everyone knows it's, it's not plain Smith. Is it Zeb with a Z or an X? Uh, Oh, I didn't even know Zeb could be spelled with a X, but that's cooler. Yeah. If if I'm worried about the Y, that's my phrase. It's Zeb Smith with an X on a Y. And people are like, what? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put uh, Saren and the connection to sibling and obligation support music career. Aw. Aw. Yeah. And what was your name again, Amelia, your character's name? Maris. Maris. What is, what is an obligation to Zeb? See, what does he really want? Just... Make sure love. I get paid. Yes, right. But love is nice too. <laughs> Acceptance is what I'm going for. It doesn't have to. You don't have to love me. You just got to accept me. Okay. Well, I don't have to. That's just the goal. Gotcha. What's kind of your your goal, uh, Maris? Hmm. What, what is my goal? Yeah. Um. Well, my goal is to like keep this family business afloat. Oh yeah. Uh. Okay. My my obligation to you is to help keep your stress down. Aw. Nice. And then uh, Zeb, uh, my co-worker connection. Um, I think my obligation to you is friendship. Love it. And I've got moms, offspring, and support business. Um, slash life. <laughs> life. I gave you life! <laughs> what are you, you going to put for your actual age? Um, 
That's interesting. I was thinking early to mid twenties, but I'm I'm fine with uh, whatever you think. So the reason that's there um, is that the whole MacGuffin in the Blue Planet setting is this xenosilicate, the stuff they call Long John, mm-hmm. that's being mined on the planet and um, used in genetic engineering. It's it's allowed the perfection of genetic engineering, which therefore includes the ability to um, stop the aging process. And so if you have enough money, you have essentially now immortal. And even though it's only been about 25 years that this technology has been available, um, if you were 20 when you started taking it, you're now 50, um, 55, and you still look 20. Uh, so not all, I mean, obviously, biosculpting and, and perfect plastic surgery can also make you look a lot younger. Mm-hmm. Um, but you are actually getting people whose chronological age is outstripping their apparent age pretty dramatically. That makes sense. Um, but you have to have the money to do that. And so we're getting um, one of the tropes in the setting is that there's this not only is wealth now separating people, but their genetics are now separating people into the healthy and the eternally young versus the aging and unhealthy. Oh, interesting. Um, and so. There's that social dynamic, but that's why in the profile or in the features section, there is that apparent age bit. I don't think we have that kind of money. No. Otherwise, our business wouldn't be. Exactly. You are transhuman, though, um, Ryan, so you might actually look quite a bit younger than you yeah. your actual age. So what, what do you want your actual age to be, uh, Amelia? I just put 25. 25. Fine, if you I said think, mid-20s. I think 25 works as well. Um, but my apparent age uh, would just be like 21. Sure. So close. My, but My actual age is 35, but I look 45 because <laughs> I was on Mars where there's not much of an atmosphere and uh-huh. it's hard on the skin. <laughs> um, I put my actual age is 25 and my apparent age is 25. <laughs> <laughs> uh i actually i'm gonna change it to 19 because I, w- I want people to mistake us like mm. uh, me being like a younger sibling but actually you're 20 minutes older no, <laughs> yeah, or something like that right uh like within days at least right yeah yeah can be like uh that time my coworker and i were both pregnant at the same time and then we ran into each other at the hospital but she still somehow managed to have her baby like four hours before i did even though i was there first yeah what the heck it was rude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait your turn. <laughs> so are we done with ties or do we want to make additional ones? I mean, you certainly could. Like oh. if you have characters that want, like if your character has a, a spouse or, or friends or a rival, whatever you want that connection to be, you could make more. And for all of these, for tracks, for tags, for ties, um, they emerge in play as well. Uh, NPCs that come up and become connected to your characters can become ties mm. uh, and people are encouraged to, to do that as part of gameplay too. okay but i feel like we probably pushed this button enough at this point yeah i i, I think i have a healthy number of ties for our purposes yeah i don't want to name anything else <laughs> <laughs> we're just filling in my my f- features over on this yeah i, I was doing that too. too um so do we want to jump ahead to features it is a uh, yeah. category in our list oh yeah yeah and, and we can backtrack to to biomods because we already selected names yep mm-hmm. yeah let's see i'm going with uh she they pronouns i'm gonna go with they them his oh, sorry they them theirs i went with she her five foot eight i like that you're so specific <laughs> I was like, I don't know what in the far future water world what the average height is, but I did put my physique is unassuming, so I put average. Oh, there That's you go. Good. Um, I noticed uh, recently that we've left off our hair color category on here. Yeah. Um, it needs to be added in. All right, what hair color are you going with, Amelia? Uh, well, see, my eyes are pale blue. So my hair is pale blue. Oh. Depending up, depending upon the biomods, you could get hair that changes color if you wanted Ooh. to. Ooh. You get hair that changes length and style and uh, any, actually animates if you really want to. Okay, so here's so, the thing. So I don't like need a biomod. My hair already changes length, Jeff. There you go. <laughs> like a, like, like a, 
you know, they'll have the the model with a fan blowing in their face so their hair moves. Like, it could just be like that all the time. All right. Um, and I'm going to go with uh, pale green and uh, pale green for eye color and hair color. Oh, nice. Um, to kind of differentiate us, but to kind of also link us as siblings. I love it. Animated tattoos for complexion. That's interesting. That's like uh, Maui. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm uh, one and a half meters tall, very slight, uh, light brown eyes, uh, very dark brown skin. My general style, I'm, I'm bald. Like, it looks like that's, it's not because I shave my head. I'm just perfectly bald. Mm-hmm. I'm reserved and quiet generally and, and uh, in terms of general style. And my clothing is kind of sloppy cool. Mm. I, I think it's probably unintentional, but, you know, it's not really calculated, but sort of sloppy cool and my parent bio mods uh I, anybody who knows what a survivor mod looks like would know that i was one but it's pretty subtle and so it's not always apparent because a lot of bio mods are um just invisible because they're internal uh but a lot of them are very apparent especially the cosmetic and aesthetic ones okay i think my general style will be trendy and flashy so the real question is, how do your moms feel about your aspiring to kind of break away from the family business and become a pop star? <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if it's uh, I, I think it's been holding me back from fully pursuing it. Um, but I, I think it's uh, only until I can find a way that it will help the business. Mm. Like, will I will I fully be able to, like, break myself off from that obligation and 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 pursue it with gusto that feels this feels very much like hannah montana meets like remington steel or something <laughs> <right>? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that makes sense i don't know what kind of bio mods you would want yeah i think the only thing we really have left um in terms of interesting character decisions to make would be the bio mods yeah um, as everyday characters we don't have a lot of resources for them mm-hmm. um, the I think, in fact, as a survivor mod, I'm pretty much tapped out already. That's my twenty five thousand plus. Um, so really, I'm kind of in debt re- in terms of character creation there. But it's more about the backstory, and that's really what um, that's the only guiding feature. So, and maybe it's worth mentioning in terms of game design. A lot of games, like uh, at least earlier versions, I haven't played later versions of like Cyberpunk or Shadowrun, but there were limits imposed um, on hard limits on sort of the bio mods or modifications you could get. And some of them were because they would affect things like your humanity or they would give you negatives to other kinds of interactions. But that never felt um, in the fiction. It didn't feel represented in mm-hmm. a way that, especially in a hard science world where genetic engineering is just a tool. Why couldn't you have all the bio mods you wanted? So the only thing that really made sense about limiting them would be, could you afford them? Um, Blue Planet still has capitalism. It didn't quite lean into a post-scarcity economy because then the, the premise of the game wouldn't work. Um, so can you afford the biomods? And um, did you have time to get them? And do you have legal access to them, right? Because some of them are pretty pretty much limited to specific kinds of service. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, it wouldn't make sense for you to have a gun built into your arm if you were just a, you know, uh, worked at a restaurant. So those are kind of the the narrative limits around them and really the only thing that kind of controls whether they appear in in the characters or not as far as the moderator is concerned. But as far as the guidance, it's 25,000 for every day, hundred for exceptional and uh, limited only by the fiction for elite. Is there any particular thing that you, I mean, your characters already have some levels of bio mods uh, in that they are engineered. Mm -hmm. Um, If you wanted something additional to that, um, one that I might suggest if we were going to play this game would be Implanted V. Um, our, everyone has, almost everybody, owns what's called a virtual interface, uh, a, a VI or a V. Um, and it is essentially a cell phone, but um, they are usually wearable or implanted. The virtue of them being implanted means that you can't lose it uh, and that you can communicate through it without talking. So you mm. just think, you just think, and it translates to your receiver. 
Uh, you can access Comcore, the Poseidon's internet, um, all without it being obvious that that's what you're doing. That sounds great. So you'd have to have an implanted one to do that, but it would be, give us a great kind of like hive mind while we are out on our adventures. Um, and it's relatively inexpensive, I think, to do that is like 10 to 15 grand um, to have it in, installed, mm. depending on the features you want. So that's a good one that, all, that tons of people have. I mean, it's very common. Of course, there's cosmetic things. You are you are a performer. Do you have any kind of like flashy cosmetic stuff that you want to have to like, did you get your mo- vocal cords modified so that Ooh. you could sing better? Um, Maybe. Or do you, can you do like Mongolian over singing just by, <laughs> by the development, <laughs> that, by the modifications they made? Um, um, I did see one that was in this, uh, this uh, quick start guy that you had sent. Um, the multi glands. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was seventeen thousand. Uh, be, the, basically, the ability to control your emotions on on the fly. Yep, I think that would be really useful for uh, singing to sure. like get into the mood of the song. You can mm-hmm. hype yourself up. You can calm yourself down. Uh, you know, get rid of those pre-performance butterflies. Yeah, and and um, go with uh, like a, like a sad song. Just like yep, put on the well, tears. And as a PI, it makes you a better liar. Yeah. Because you can calm calm yourself down and not have the typical physiological response that comes with lying. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes it harder to detect for sure. Yeah. So that, that one's 17,000. Um, so that would give me uh, 8,000 left. You can also simulate a lot of drug effects. So if you just feel like getting high, you just think it and <laughs> you're high. Oh. Yeah, I think my character would probably avoid that for the most part, unless like uh, like painkillers. Uh, yeah, if too. if uh, if things were, uh, if I got hurt because my physique is so low, yeah, <laughs> uh, I I could probably like uh, pop some internal Advil. Yep, <laughs> little dopamine burst boost. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for like uh, vocal cord enhancements. That's that one. There are some vocal ones that they haven't been converted to the new edition yet. Yeah. Um, so that you can fake your voice, like you can sound like anybody else. Um, so you, you know, a, mo- a version of that would just be, you know, perfect pitch or something. Yeah. Right? Or multiple har- or multiple octaves, perfect pitch, harmonics. That oh, kind of it'd be interesting be, to you be, be able your to... own background singer. Yeah, it'd be interesting to to harmonize with myself. Um... <laughs> So I think the remaining would just go into that vocal uh, vocal enhancer. And the fun thing was, if you go over your 25,000 limit, you could be like paying that off secretly. Like you got it done. Your moms don't know. And you're like <laughs> trying to pay it off because it was expensive. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going with the implant and my survivor mod. Awesome. With the uh, V implant. What do you got, Amelia? Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with the implant. Yeah, it's called an up, it's called an uh, a um, implanted uplink, and it can actually be its own V, or it can just connect to your external V, so that you're thinking to the to the phone in your pocket, or the earrings you're wearing, or the necklace you have, or the the thing that you've glued to your forehead that looks like a, a weird cult symbol, whatever it happens to be, the wearable <laughs> V. That you're using. So that I believe. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. I don't, features, that's it. I don't think we need um, to go through gear or anything like that. No. That's and just, that's really, just the advice picking. we give around gear is what's realistic for your characters to have. Yeah. Right. Um, it becomes important if you're strand, if you're washed ashore on a desert island after falling off of a boat. It matters exactly what you've got. But if we're running a PI business, there's certain things we'd probably have in the office or at home. Mm-hmm. And if it becomes like relevant to the plot to not have it, well, that's easy enough for the moderator to say, Oh, mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of an expensive piece of gear, and you broke yours last week, and so you gotta you gotta get a new one before you can do X, Y, or Z. Yeah, very cool. So that's it. That's, yeah, that's Blue Planet characters. Blue oh, Planet we contact characters. We did it. Yeah, I really Yay. like this. Uh, we made some people. Goodness gracious! Very cool. And we've got names and everything. That wasn't even the last step that we did. I know. And you had a name before I did. I know. It's because I was thinking about it because I knew it was coming and I oh, there you go. I'm really bad at it. <laughs> well, 
Well, uh, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us for Blue uh, Planet Recontact character creation. This has been a blast. It's been absolutely fun. I love this. It Uh, was great. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, do you want to remind people where uh, where they can find you online? Sure. Uh, They can find me probably most readily uh, on Twitter at at Biohazard Jeff. Uh, We have a website, www.biohazardgames.us. And uh, right now, hopefully, you can find us on Kickstarter uh, uh, with our campaign to fund uh, Blue Planet Recontact. Yeah, very cool. Uh, And we'll have a link to the show notes uh, for that. Well, thank you, Jeff, and thank you to everyone for listening. Please join us again for the next episode when we do our discussion block. Call to watch action. Yeah, like that. I am really excited for this game. I I really enjoy the characters that we created this series. Um, Next episode, we've got some great discussion for you all. Uh, So don't miss out on that uh, next week. But before we bid you adieu, uh, we do have a couple uh, call to action items for you. I before I say those things, though, I'm really, really excited for the discussion portion of this. I think it's always better when we get to have the creators on the show. I think we get to have really good discussions, but mm-hmm. I think that we, I don't, I really enjoyed this one. I think Jeff was really, really insightful about the work that he's doing on this game, and it was it was a lot of fun to talk about. Absolutely. Uh, first, if you've liked what you hear so far. Uh, on today's episode and last week's, you can go check out the Blue Planet Recontact Kickstarter link in our show notes. There are plenty of new stretch goals in there, and um, it would be phenomenal to fill all of those in. But either way, uh, the great news is if you back it now, you are for sure getting the game. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, also, don't forget this April is Podchaser's Reviews for Good campaign. Uh, leave a review for your pa- favorite podcasts on Podchaser, and they will donate 25 cents to Meals on Wheels. Uh, and if we creators respond, they will double that. Um, also, this works for both podcast and episode reviews, so go ahead and let us know what you think of your favorite episodes as well. Uh, we'll even read those right here, like uh, this review from Ilspove on Podchaser for series 29.1, our L5R series with David Gordon Buresh. Oh, of course I get to read this review. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> I picked this episode to start because I recognize the system. I got a fascinating glimpse into the player culture of the game I've read so much about, but never had a chance to play. Five Rings is one of the host's favorite systems, so the level of enthusiasm makes it easy to get excited along with them. Nice, approachable introduction to mechanics that can seem intimidatingly reliant on social intelligence and advanced roleplay. Also included the delightful detail that there is a crab clam. I love that. Impression. Great for players who enjoy testing their characters to destruction. (laughs) Yes, that's absolutely correct. And also, yes, crab clam. (laughs) Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I, I I love having seen that game through your lens, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's uh, it's something that uh, I I hope to play someday. I think that was what made um, our uh, Heroes Unlimited series fun for me too. In part, was because like you clearly enjoyed it and i think the same thing with l5r is like we both have that like love of these Mm -hmm. games but also because we love them so much we're so aware of the places where they are bad (laughs) you're like you know i'll say the same thing about my children of like i love them wholeheartedly with all of my being but i am aware sometimes they're naughty Mm -hmm. um and (laughs) i feel that way about my games too like i love this game so much but like (laughs) please don't wake me up early in the morning and please don't leave your underwear on the floor yeah rpgs come on (laughs) (laughs) it's like that just exactly like that just like that exactly (laughs) (laughs) well uh, that's all that we have for this episode uh next week's episode won't be nearly as long uh but the discussion was really fantastic as we mentioned um until then take care everyone stay safe and keep making those amazing people we'll see you next time bye bye
Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Campaign. Campaign is an actual play podcast exploring lawn form role-playing. The current campaign, Skyjacks, takes place in an original setting inspired by the music of the Decemberists, folk tales, and classic adventure fiction. Join Liz Anderson, John Patrick Cohen, Tyler Davis, Johnny O'Mara, and Game Master James D'Amato as they tell a tale of daring sky pirates. Also, it's basically an elaborate retelling of Weekend at Bernie's. Just search for Campaign or James D'Amato on iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app.